we saw that monopoly is a price setter which means it has significant market power to set its own price one of the things that we see in monopoly is a behavior of price discrimination what is price discrimination well price discrimination is where a firm sells the same product to different consumers at different prices even though production costs are the same so when the production costs are the same and the consumers are charged different prices clearly this form of price uh, charging or price setting can be very profitable for the firm leading to much higher profits than let's say a single price monopolist or a monopolist that does not practice price discrimination there are three forms of price discrimination the first form of price discrimination is called uh, first degree price discrimination this is the price discrimination which occurs when the monopolist is able to charge each individual consumers the maximum amount they are prepared to pay for a, a product in other words what they are willing to pay a good example of this could be individual with spare tickets for major sell out concerts and uh, cricket let's say matches will try to bargain uh, with potential buyers to try to estimate the maximum amount they are prepared to pay if uh, first degree price discrimination is successful then we can say what consumers are willing to pay is what they actually pay and therefore the whole consumer surplus will be eliminated let's see first degree price discrimination through a diagram so if i draw a demand curve when i say the consumer can pay we charge five dollars for five units that's called uh, no discrimination because each consumer will be charged five dollar per uh, unit and therefore the producer will make a total revenue of price times quantity or 25 dollars now if second scenario can be if uh, a producer is doing what we call first degree price discrimination in that case let's say the first consumer who walks in the producer decides to charge a price of nine dollars for the second consumer let's say the producer decides to charge eight dollars for the third consumer he continues to charge a different price for example seven dollars and the fourth unit he let's say sells at another price let's say six dollars now look at this that each of these prices are on the demand curve which means these are the prices consumer was willing to pay so total revenue in this case when you are doing price discrimination where you're charging each consumer a price what he's willing to pay will be nine plus eight plus seven plus six plus five so rather than having twenty five dollars for five units which is uh, five times five we are charging each uh, for each unit a different price and therefore this will add up to $35 which means my new total revenue let's call it total revenue one will be higher by $10 because of the first degree price discrimination now one may argue that first degree price discrimination is fairly rare in the real world because it's very hard to find out what consumers are willing to pay and they will definitely not tell you what they're willing to pay because that's something they will hide however if producer is successful to do first degree price discrimination then if this is the most profitable uh, sort of form of price discrimination because here the whole consumer surplus which was this region which is under the demand curve above the market price is now producer surplus consumer is exactly paying what he was uh, willing to pay let's now move on to the second degree price discrimination in the second degree price discrimination the firm charges different prices according to how much they purchase so for example if i am a consumer i purchase less unit i may have a different price than another consumer who might be purchasing much more a good example of this is how often utility companies uh, operate like electricity and gas providers what they do is that they may have a lower price for the first number of units the essential ones and then a higher price for any extra unit consumed and this may make sense because if you are a poor consumer you may use uh, less electricity or less gas then let's say if you are a rich consumer who might have more appliances and therefore more electricity electricity use now we can see this example let's say that i use 25 units and each unit is sold for five dollars this means the 
total revenue that I'm generating as a consumer will be $125. But what about I can do price discrimination and let's say I can charge uh, for the first 10 units, the essential one, a price of uh, let's say uh, $5. But then the next 10 units I can charge a price of $10 and the last five units I can charge a price of for example $20. Now this would mean I can get $50 for the first 10 units, $100 for the next uh, 10 units and then another hundred dollar for the last sort of five units which means this way I can make double the revenue or two fifty dollars because now I am charging different uh, prices for different quantity bought a th another example of uh, second degree price discrimination could be you know buy one get one free or you know two for X dollar kind of offers all of these mean that the quantity may determine how much price you will be paying ultimately let's move on to a third degree price discrimination in this consumers are charged uh, different prices as they are grouped into two or more independent markets uh, a good example of this could be students or older people may get discounted bus fares uh, the young and or old may get cheaper access to let's say any sporting event or for example you may have different price charge when you buy or when you travel during rush hour or non rush hour so these are different examples of price discrimination of third degree where we are trying to sort of put consumers in different groups and try to discriminate according to the elasticity of demand Clearly those with inelastic demand will have higher willingness to pay and therefore will pay a higher price while those with uh, lo a higher elasticity of demand will have a lower willingness to pay and therefore will be charged a lower price. There are three conditions which are necessary for price discrimination to take place. The first one is that the firms must have a market power. In other words, price discrimination is not possible in a perfectly competitive market where no seller has the power to charge other than the market going price. So price discrimination can take place only where firms have some ability to vary the price or in other words, when the firm faces a downward sloping demand curve, which means not perfectly elastic demand curve. The second important assumption or condition which is necessary for price discrimination is that the consumers must have different elasticities of demand for the product. Different elasticity of demand means different willingness to pay. If they do not have different elasticities then they would not be prepared to pay different prices for the product. It follows that a consumer with relatively inelastic demand will be prepared to pay a higher price because he may need the good much more than somebody with a relatively elastic demand. So when do we have different elasticities of demand we can say the firm then will have the ability to charge a different price. The last condition necessary for price discrimination is the idea that price discrimination will only be possible if producer must be able to separate the consumers so that they are not able to buy the product and then sell it to another consumer. In other words, if the consumers could easily resell the product, then price discrimination would not be possible because then the consumer would engage in something called arbitrage. In other words, the group of consumers who qualified for the low price could buy up the product and then turn a profit by reselling it to consumers in other segments of the market. So for example, let's say in one neighborhood the price is for $5 and in, in the more affluent neighborhood the price is for $10. So somebody uh, can buy the product for $5 and then go to the other market where the good is sold for $10 and sell it for 7 and make it difficult for the monopolist to discriminate. So this would mean that the firm will no longer be able to sell at a higher price and would no longer uh, be able to discriminate because the consumers are taking advantage of this arbitrage. So when these three conditions are true we can say price discrimination will be possible and we saw there are three forms of these price discrimination and clearly since we can charge different consumers different prices price discrimination will be very profitable for 
a firm that is practicing it. Now, in the next video, we'll talk about some of the consequences of price discrimination. In other words, we look at pros and cons for consumers and producers and see whether price discrimination is desirable at large for general public.